Christmas cheat for Megalomania on the Mega Drive. On the password screen, simply type in jewels, like so, and when you start to play, you'll get a secret hidden game that's like the classic arcade game, Asteroids. Brilliant. Well, oh, excuse me. Um, yes, yes. Oh, look, it's another Christmas card. Hey. Oh, it's from Cuddles and Flash. We've got to do something too. Oh. Oh, well. It's just uh, me, Andy and Violet, then. I'm not going to Nam's party, are you? Nah, I'm going to stay in and dye my hair a funny colour. Well, sure already out. As this is the last in the present series, we've decided to devote the entire news and preview section to showing you everything that's going to be happening in the new year. But can we fit it in in the time? Here goes. No games that will be complete without a beat em up. Apart from Rise of the Robots, the other big one coming out next year is Eternal Champions on the Mega Drive. It aims the better Street Fighter 2. Two out in spring, and it features the greatest fighters of all eternity coming together for one last grand tournament. Shoot 'em ups will be coming fast and furious next year. This is R Type 3 on the snares. No prizes for guessing what this is the sequel to. All the weapons have been beefed up to include laser blasts galore, remote robotic cannon pods, and a choice of three different droid blasters at the beginning. Inferno on the PC and Amiga 1200 isn't just another shoot 'em up, it's also a massive space odyssey. You've got to hurtle around an entire solar system, battling to survive against over 300 heavily armoured death craft. Ground Zero Texas on the Mega CD is a good example of the way games and films are coming closer and closer together. It features three million dollars worth of footage shot exclusively for the game. You play an undercover agent investigating strange disappearances in a small Texas town, and before you know it, you're fighting a full-scale alien invasion. The game producers reckon it's the best Mega CD game ever, but then they would, wouldn't they? On to adventure games, this is the stunning Alone in the Dark 2, which finally hits the shops in January. It's only available on PC, but then it needs all the power it can get to produce the incredible graphics. As before, you can watch the action from different camera angles, and you have to cope with all sorts of devious puzzles, traps and plot twists. Another epic adventure on the PC is Stone Keep, starring 3D characters and backgrounds with 14 different locations. As with many of these big games nowadays, there's digitised movie footage. And finally in the adventure section, there's Young Merlin for the SNES. It's got ten lands, loads of animation and digitised speech. The plot? Well, it's the usual stuff. Merlin must outwit the King's army and battle assorted evil geezers. Blah, blah, blah. Onward, onward, onward. Times are pressing. The next section are Sims. And this is the amazing Star Wars Rebel. Space Sim Rebel Assault. The graphics are really film-like and the characters even speak to you as you blow up walkers and take on Star Destroyers to fend off the advances of the evil empire. It's out now on PC CD-ROM and it's coming out on Mega CD next year. This one's a pinball sim. It's Dragon's Revenge for the Mega Drive, the sequel to the excellent Dragon's Fury. It's got bigger tables, more music and it's out in January. This watch is excellent, not because you can tell the time on it, but because it's also a tiny TV and video remote control. So you can switch off people's televisions. You can sneak around furtively just going, oh, sorry about that one. Oh, sorry about that one. And then you won't lose it behind the back of the sofa when it's time to switch on for bad influence. Boink. After that brief interruption for gadget fans, have a look at rock and roll racing on the SNES. As well as being a fast and furious, laser firing, bullet biting road race, it features some great rock and roll tracks from bands like Black Sabbath and Steppenwolf. And so to platform games, that funky duo Toe Jam and Earl return for another adventure on the Mega Drive. This second game finds them hunting stowaway earthlings on the planet Funkatron. Jungle Book, also on the Mega Drive, should have hit the shops for Christmas, but due to programming problems it won't be out till June. This is an early version, but it's looking like it's going to be well worth the wait. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Now for some reviews of this week's games. Micro Machines was the number one hit on the Mega Drive. Now it's out on four new formats. Amiga, which you're looking at now, PC, Master System and Game Gear. In the wacky miniature world of Micro Machines, races take place on breakfast tables, in sand pits and even in the bathtub. So let's make it a nice clean race. Here's Amanda with the Game Gear version. I've played this game on other systems, but I think it works better on the Game Gear. Probably because it feels like you've got a wheel in your hand. This is where you choose the characters. Every character has a different personality and a different driving ability. I'll choose to be Spider. I think he's really cool. Every level has a different car. Here I'm in a Porsche and I'm on a desktop. It's very hard on the desktop because there's no edges and you can fall off or knock people off. But I've just fallen off myself. So the cars are very hard to control, so the level is very hard indeed. But the graphics are excellent for a game gear. Just look at the detail in the wood grain. 
There is a two-player option, which you play on just the one Game Gear, which is definitely cosy. I'm using the buttons, and Alex is using the D-pad. The idea of the game is to get away from the other player, and then that person gets a bonus. If you've got a Game Gear, you should definitely get this. It's brilliant fun. An excellent game, particularly in two-player mode, although it depends who you've got to sit close to. I found this game quite hard to control at first, but it's very playable once you get the hang of it. And the scores for Micro Machines, both the boys and the girls, gave it an above average 4 out of 5. Meet the Cyberpunks. Three little chaps with funny haircuts who are the stars of a new Amiga game. It's a familiar plot. Baddies have taken over the universe again, and you've got to restore order by shooting lots of things. Here's the catch. There's a lot of time and effort being put into this game, but the producers forgot to add one thing. Gameplay. The aim of this game is to find keys and disks which allow you to go into computer terminals and discover maps of the area. The characters are quite cute and the graphics are okay. But the problem with the game is that you feel it's quite a laborious task. You don't enjoy it. There's not much excitement. It's not the worst game in the world. It's just mind-numbingly boring. I love the hairstyles, but I don't like anything else about it. A run-of-the-mill platform game. The gameplay is just not varied enough. And the scores for Cyberpunk, both the girls and the boys, gave it a dull 2 out of 5. And now a look at what some people think will be the future of Games Console's 3DO. If you're not familiar with the system, it's a CD-based machine. It'll play photo CDs, music CDs, and soon you'll be able to get movies on CD for it too. But it's really catching people's imagination as a sophisticated games console. It's recently been launched in America where it comes with a racing game called Crash and Burn. You choose between six dangerous Sunday drivers and race around some very detailed texture map tracks. There's a choice of weapons, armor and gadgets to keep you in the race, and the game has some excellent video footage and speech effects. There are very few finished games around for it at the moment, but here's a quick look at a couple we managed to get hold of. It's time to get twisted with your host, Twink Fisdale. <laughs> This one's called Twisted. It's an unusual idea for a game. You join Twink Finsdale and his glamorous assistant, Hannah, in one of Hollywood's glitziest game shows. You're up against six other strange contestants, and there are thousands of brain-busting challenges. Put on your thinking cap, kids. Hi, everyone. Welcome to John Madden Football. John Madden Football has been converted from the Mega Drive and makes full use of the 3DO facilities, with digitized players and stadiums and ball-by-ball -ball commentary and tips from the great man himself. The system's due to be launched in this country next April. It will probably cost around £500, which is a lot for a games console, but the manufacturers are hoping that you will buy this instead of buying a photo CD and a CD player as well. We'll report on 3DO's progress next year. Well... <laughs> Andy and Violet have obviously been delayed a little. <laughs> Still, there's time to do one more cheat before the shed fills up with happy partying dudes. It's for Sleepwalker on the Amiga. Now, at the beginning of the game, when Ralph and Lee are running through the Sleepwalker logo, type in Dinger Ding, Dang My Danger Long Ling Long, and their noses will turn green. Then, at any point during the game, you can press return and skip levels. <laughs> Well, here's the final part of my guide to a better Christmas. On Christmas Eve, it's always dead difficult to get to sleep, so this is a trick that sometimes works. Uh, here we go. Uh, 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 mm, mm. Ah, uh, Ovaltine. <laughs> and now, to get to sleep. <laughs> Don't try that at home. Nam has been specially trained. If you want to read the date of last, set your video recorder going now. Last week's competition was to win a 3DO with some games, and the competition question was, what does R-I-S-C stand for, as in the risk chip that's inside a 3DO? Runners-up will get Bad Influence t-shirts. Your names are going across the screen now. Well done. The answer was reduced instruction set chip. And the winner, Gareth Williams from Hemel Hempstead. Well done. This is the last show, so there's no competition. If 3D only we could stay longer, but it's a Nintendo the series. But I'm eager to make another series. And you will do, but not until the autumn. Until then, we have to Sega. Bye. All right, then. Tatari. Peace, ya. Bye!